Dave Birch, why are you at the Thanks European you, yeah. Women Payment Network? Uh, well, I was quite flattered to be invited, actually. I'm, I'm one of the male allies uh -huh. for the payment network, and I helped to present one of the awards last night. Yeah, there can and be uh, uh, male fun. supporters uh, who yeah, are basically yeah, yeah. Uh, ambassadors of it. Male ambassadors. Yeah, it's... it's uh, as I say, it's flattering, so I was very happy to be okay, here. From a male perspective, and the ultimate male, because, I mean, you always talk about certain things, what is your, uh, what is your analysis of women on high places in the financial payment industry? I think, first of all, I think our industry uh, has some things to be proud of. I mean, I think it is, obviously, it's not as diverse as people would imagine. But actually, if you go to a lot of the people I work for, yeah the big card schemes and so on i yeah. i think they have done well at, at uh, helping women to to move up uh, in this space the point i made yesterday was f i think the things that need to be done are quite small things they're not superhuman things that need doing it's just small changes to the way people think the way people they organize things the way people work and those can make quite a big difference okay. so let's talk about those so small things good. what are a couple of give me the top three small things which can change that whole uh, paradigm of uh, women never being in high places what well, talking from my <laughs> I say limited experience so far for the women that, that I think I've helped um, I think personal brand is very important I think there's a gender difference there I think sometimes women uh, are reluctant to to begin establishing a position on uh, LinkedIn or Twitter and those things are important nowadays so I think personal brand is one thing yeah there is this kind of I saw the difference you being on stage with a fantastic woman and you were immediately going to the front of the stage taking all the room taking all the time talking nice and she had to basically get in there and and and, and basically stop you talking which is not easy well, that's a little harsh but uh, but no, it's not uh, harsh. It was uh, you were saying but nice things, but, but women I mean, have to learn how to promote themselves. Yes, and uh, and I don't think that's a insurmountable challenge. I think with some thought, you can do it. It's just leader leadership skills. Uh, the second thing is, I think the way we organize work has to change slightly. And in our business, I think that's actually quite easy. We don't have to have a nine to five. We don't have to have meetings arranged in the evenings when when it's difficult for women because of childcare and so on i think that's quite a flexible business and i it, certainly in my personal experience it's quite easy to reorganize uh, mm -hmm. things around that so the okay, so technology is helping that all these because other capabilities of, because men don't take care of the kids we have a world of mobile phones and internet and so on so you know if 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 we need to change the way so women can work from home some of that i don't see that as a pro and in fact it's worked for us so okay. that's a so the second thing is the my thing about that the technology um, and the flexibility yeah. yeah and the third thing is a problem that none of us have an easy fix for which is in which is growing the pool of women from the what we call the stem side women who study science technology engineering mathematics the pool of women coming into the industry from that side is actually shrinking it's shrinking crazy. and that's not a problem that you can blame on on old men or the industry that's a problem much earlier in the educational system that somehow needs to be i mean for people who have daughters um and want to encourage them into those areas i i do feel they still face barriers yeah to do with role models and so on. Yeah, so if you're looking at the fintech, uh, the fintech and especially the technical applications, you see there there is a problem with that uh, education. Yeah, I think it's not you, you know it's not all the industry's fault. No. There, there the regulators, there's a lot of women there, right? Well, but that's because when you're talking about regulators, are largely lawyers, yeah. and if you're talking about things like law and medicine, then the pool of women is growing. It's not a, but in the technology area, it's actually getting worse. The number of women studying. Uh, uh, technology subject is actually going down and um, it's an I it's a problem the industry can work with other people on but it's not a problem we can fix ourselves okay, last thing you picked up here I, s I saw a tweet that you said that uh, GDPR that somebody from the European Central Bank said that GDPR was just made to um, keep all the lawyers occupied what 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 was exact what was well the I essence I of that look, uh, I'm very skeptical about GDPR GDPR imposes significant costs. Uh, the, remember, the conversation was about innovation. Yeah. GDPR, if you're Facebook or Google, too, yeah, yeah. you have 10,000 lawyers that can deal with all this kind of thing. But if you're a little startup, 
GDPR, AML, these are big barriers to, to market entry. So I, I, I'm slightly negative about it. It's not obvious to me that, uh, I mean, I, I'm happy to be proved wrong by evidence. Well, but the it, percentage, but it's, for it's, example, everybody saying... It's obvious to me GDPR is a good thing. Yeah, and that is the same with a lot of laws. And we talked about in the fintech world, when companies are small, should there be different rules that, uh, you know, in the first couple of years or that you are for t companies which are 20 people or 20,000 people that are slightly different expectations? Well, it, it depends what you're talking about. So, you know, should a company that has 20 people in it be allowed to abuse your personal data? <laughs> A Facebook card. Well, no. no. Only if they have 20,000 people. But, so, but, but, but what you need is simpler and less complex rules mm -hmm. so that the small companies can implement them without massive expense. A very good example is AML. You've got AML5 coming, which is going to raise the... And I think the head of Europol... Yep. The, it was an English guy, wasn't it? Yep. Not for much longer, I assume, but... Uh, well, the head of Interpol Maybe. was a Chinese, which was arrested. Uh, uh, Interpol, Europol. Oh, Europol. The head of Europol. I think, I can't remember the exact figures, but he said banks spend whatever it is. Yeah. I don't remember. A billion, trillion dollars a year. Yeah. And on as you AML. can see from ING, they were extremely efficient. It's wasted. Less than 1% of the fraud. So... Less than 1% of the fraud so is captured. Bother? So why bother? Now, is it really 1% of the total fraud is oh. captured by all these... The so you may as well not bother with the AML rules at all and just use artificial intelligence and machine learning to capture all of the transaction data and look for fraudulent patterns and spot... I mean, why bother? You, you know what I mean? So it needs this kind of rethinking. I'm not saying that the small companies should have different regulation. What I'm saying is the regulation should be different so that they allow small... They allow small... In because... As I say, the innovation. And in order to get innovation, we need fair competition. Yeah. And less rules for uh, all the companies. Hey, the thing you talked about is uh, you made a pitch for identity, that we should reorganize identity uh, you know, to, to go to the next level of financial services. Yeah, so Where will it come from, identity? Will it be government? Will it be banks? Or will it be other parties uh, who provide that? Well... You know, given my background and the kind of people, I, I mean, I was hoping that banks would be the people that would construct the fundamental new identity infrastructure that we need. But they don't seem interested in doing that. So, so um, it could come from anywhere. But I think if you look at the UK as an education system right now, it's. So for all I know, it could okay, be... Okay, the, the people in the UK, the people who pay, the, who make the biggest identification platform is the porn guys? Yeah. They'll have something like 20, 25 million users next year. And the government identity system has 3 million and nobody uses it and they're scrapping it. So I, I want it to be banks. Who knows where it can come from? But it's essential for our next step. Yeah, if we don't fix that. If, if we don't have regulated institutions fix the problem... Other people will fix the problem. And it could be Facebook, it could be Google. I want it to be banks, but I can't provide you with any evidence they're actually going to do it. Dave Birch, thanks for coming to the Netherlands and thanks for supporting the European Women Payment Network. It's always great talking to you, Vincent, and it's a, it's a great event. It's been very enjoyable. Okay.